swearing, diamond ring wearing, kiss stealing, willing dealing, limo jet flying. We rig flaring on the flaring on the. We rig flaring on the flaring on the Rolex wearing, diamond ring wearing, kiss stealing, willing dealing, limo jet flying. Uh, we rig flaring on the flaring on the. We rig flaring on the flaring on. Uh, it's apparent these girls staring. I'm rig flaring, go to cross my chest. I'm fresh to death. I'm Paul Barry. When I open like bed and watch the find to these circles that's going in like a carry shot. Woo! I'm going in like a merry pop off that merry crop in the top flow at the Marriott. So questioning me is like questioning you. See, we the best dress, so come and get blessed with the crew. Not one but two. Different ways to slaughter your crew. Committed tat across the chest. I guess she blessed with the truth. People wanna see them checks, representation of proof. Living through my elders, trying to resonate to the youth. But ain't nothing to get my flash on. Legevity is heavily embedded in my melanin. Lame in terms, I last long. My ground repetitive, I'm smoother than real silk. Lyrical cash cow, who can't cry for spilled milk. We in here. You're talking to the Rolex wearing, diamond ring wearing, kiss stealing, willing dealing, limo jet flying. This preparation with greatness Industry full of fakeness It's really up for the taking See life is what happened to you More so how you take it Don't get stripped of your knowledge And mentally leave you naked I like to live otherwise I'm sorry that I'm fresh to death I put the polo and apologize See black sun We ain't nothing like the mother guys Quit to socialize You organize Then we mobilize off the deep end like a scuba diver And no confusion, just keep it pushing like Uber drivers Woo! Business fresh just like a supervisor In a Gucci visor, can't find a smoother rhymer You talking to the Rolex wearing Diamond ring wearing Kiss stealing, willing dealing, limo jet flying We rip flaring on the flaring on We rip flaring on the You talking to the Rolex wearing Diamond ring wearing Kiss stealing, willing dealing, limo jet flying Flaring on us, flaring on us. We rig flaring on us, flaring on us. Yeah, BQ baby. Shout out that boy Nigga for that fire track. Hey, Black Sun, sun up. What's up, Vinny Vegas? What in Vegas? <laughs> Hey, yo, Scotty, you going crazy for this one? We see what you're doing, we salute you. Hey, let's get it started. It's Backpack Capital One. What's in your wallet? Got a call from my man, A. Scott. I said I got it. Love that you highlighting all of these black colleges. Try to pay me for doing this. Look, bruh, if you don't get off my line with that foolishness, voice of the swag. Pull up where you at, no cap. If the Brody is speaking the soft facts. My advice, tune in to every show. Captain Petty, but we know that the sergeants are with the smoke. Speculate, just tell me what is we doing. Get into it, okay? Look, I'ma say this and keep it moving. My boy Scotty, man, he all for the least Black grad paying college, I'm glad that he called me Walk it, cause we all been taught that talk is cheap Even primetime knows Scott for the HBCU streets What is going on, everybody? You already know what it is, your boy Scotty back with another one Happy Monday! I don't know if y'all really be peeping it, but I'd be like looking at the corner of my computer screen to make sure like I, I know what day I'm on because I really don't be knowing what day I'll be like, happy oh, Monday. Anyway, woo, I keep telling y'all, man. Some days I get on here and I'll be like, ah, I ain't got nothing to talk about. And then there's a ram in the bush. <laughs> Oh my God, boy, these HBCU streets never fail. 
They never fail. Listen, I'm going to make my announcements. And once I get done with the announcements, this will become a members only chat. You already know what it is. If you ain't a member, you ain't chatting. It's just that simple. Don't mean you can't watch. Don't mean you can't tune in. All right, because I know a lot of you old members are sitting watching me on the TV anyway. Like, oh, man, you know, Scotty, I don't really be in the chat like that, but it's all right. But anyway, let me listen, man. I've been really wanting to give this man another shout out. Mr. Samuel. G this is the wonderful gentleman who did what? Uh, uh, bought me this fly ass chair. Uh, uh, that's him. All right. So once again, Mr. Samuel Gilbert, fam, you rattler through and through. Thank you, my good man. I truly, truly appreciate you. Okay. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. And listen, if nobody got memberships, you are more than welcome to gift memberships to any of these lovely constituents out here. Come on, man. It's $4.99, $6.99, whatever, $9.99. It's a bag of chips. It's a nice big bag of chips. That's what you do. You're supporting me by buying me a bag of chips. That's that's pretty much what it is. So would you like to buy a brother a bag of chips, sir? A good sir. Anyway, that's what it is, what it is. So appreciate all you guys who are members, like I said. The wife already told me, babe, got to do more for your members. So this is me doing more for my members. Let's get to the announcements and then we'll make it a members only chat. First up, listen, when you do things elite, you can only do them one way. OK, you can only do it away. And that's elite 15 coffee. Link is in the description below. Whatever you need, they got it. Veteran owned, black owned business. Listen, it gets no better than elite 15 coffee. OK, elite 15 coffee. Get you some coffee. Get up on the right foot. Get on that good foot. Elite 15 coffee. Okay. Oh, man. Thank you so, so, so. Lastly, listen, we on the road to 300. We like Spartans out here. Spartans, what do we do? Ho, ho, ho. We on the road to 300. All right. We kicking doors in. Ha. We on the road. To three hundo, okay. So I think it's about. I think we have like two forty five right now, all right, or two forty six with my boy Reese, right. So listen. Oh, we gifted five off script members. Shout out to my boy uh, Reese for that as well. Reese, oh please, please Reese, uh, put in your um, if we could, guys, can we come together real quick? Got to make an uh, announcement, sad announcement. But my boy Reese's mom is looking for heart surgery. All right, his mom is looking for heart surgery. So please, 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 please let's support him and do that. Reese, drop the link uh, to the GoFundMe in the in the chat, please, and thank you. Let's support him. Let's get him what he needs uh, for whatever helps, whatever he can. Please help. Uh, his mom is going through a heart surgery. He has a GoFundMe. Whatever you can give, please give. All right, be a blessing to somebody. All right. Shout out to my members as well. All right, here's that time. It's about that time. So if you ain't got no membership, listen, you ain't got to go home. <laughs> you ain't got to go home. But you got to get up out the club. All right? But you got to get up out the club. You ain't got to go home. But you got to get up out the club. All right? This has now become a members-only chat. You already know what it is. Please, please, please uh, see yourselves out the door. Let's get into it today. Listen. This is has this has been a very, very, very hot topic, right? This has been a very hot topic. But the re I'm I'm going to go in a different direction, right? My my cousin called me, uh, Scott uh, Scotty Shiesty called me. He said, "Hey, cuzzo, you want me to do a show?" I said, "Hey, not right now." I said, "I want to talk about something different on this one." He said, "Okay, because you know, cuzzo, I'm good with the scuffle review." I said, "Yeah, I know, I know you're good with the scuffle review." You know what I'm saying? So, but he didn't want to do one. I didn't want him to do one right away. I wanted to take this in a different direction, right? Because everybody's talking about the fight and and good and 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 rightfully so, right? Rightfully so. But my issue is when we take a we take a situation and we turn it on his head. So let me play you the video that really bothered me uh earlier today that I saw. Let me see if I can get to it real quick. Here we go. Show you know what I tell you what you've never seen. Peyton and Eli been having a camp for twenty something years. You yeah. ain't never seen no kids be disrespectful to Peyton and Eli. Yeah. Tell me, the, tell me the footage. Yeah. Tell me the footage that you've seen out there. Show it to me. 
Mm-hmm. Well, Peyton or Eli asked these kids or the Drew Brees because a lot of times they take up a, a, a lot of these pro quarterbacks and sometimes upper level college quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. Show me the footage. It's mm-hmm. us because we think it's cute. I show, hey, man, I went out there, man, I told Cal to shut up. I told him he was trash. I told him he was garbage. Y'all think that's cute. It's yeah. not. It's not. And you wonder why. I don't. I've been stopped wondering. Right. Okay. I'm going to let this continue, but let me cut in here, right? We all, this is my issue, right? You're comparing apples to oranges. First of all, Eli and Peyton don't put on seven on seven tournaments. Eli are not in the hood putting on seven on seven tournaments. They're not. That's numero uno. Okay? Now, if you had read the statement by TSP, right? The statement said that Cam Newton, this is allegedly, right, from their point of view, it said that Cam Newton, because TSP and Cam Newton have a relationship, right? But that Cam Newton was talking trash to the team. He was saying, oh, I did that. Oh, I drew that up. I'm your daddy. Right. And one of and, and the owner of TSP went up to Cam and like, hey man, can you chill? This is their side. This is their side, allegedly. Right. You know Cam's gonna do a podcast about it and get mad views. Okay. We already know what's coming. Right. He's gonna have there with the cigar or funky Friday, whatever you want to call it. You know it's coming, right? But the thing is this that's I I, I hate that this is the avenue that Shannon and Ocho decide to die on because that's not the same. Is it was it wrong? Absolutely. It absolutely. Is it a bad look? Absolutely. But why do we have to why do we have to blow it up to say, oh, oh if if Peyton and Eli were they don't do this. They do not do this. And listen, my 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 grandfather used to always say, if you hang in the jungle, you better know how to fight. Right. If you hang in the jungle, you better know how to fight. If you're going to these areas and you're getting these kids, let's not act like we don't know what comes with these kids. It's the same thing. You don't antagonize a lion. So what? I'm not going to go in the jungle and wear meat around my neck. And be like, oh, yeah, I'm in the jungle. I'm the king of this joker. No, because I'm going to get eaten alive. It's the same thing. And you can say whatever you want. It's the same thing. If I'm in the hood, I'm not going to drive down the hood with an S550 and try to stunt on people in the hood. I'm not saying, let me be very clear. I'm not saying that Cam Newton giving back to the community, he shouldn't be there. No, no, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is this. Understand that in life, all that celebrity status at the at, when you go to the hood, that shit don't mean nothing, right? You might think it means it don't mean nothing because I don't have anything. I don't have nothing to lose. All I have is to prove to you that I'm better than what you think I am. So when if or not Cam Newton was talking smack, he has to understand what comes with that and what response was that came with it. Right, wrong, or indifferent, he also has to carry himself a certain way. There's a difference between celebrating with your kids and doing all the fun stuff and then crossing the line by not being professional or not holding yourself to a standard. Because if you drop yourself to a standard and you meet, and Key tells me all this, if you meet somebody where they're at, understand that whatever comes with that comes with that right now do i think it should have came into something physical like a physical altercation absolutely not it should have never gotten there and that's adults not being adults and handling the situation but everybody has a part to play in this and the the issue that i have with shannon is the first thing you want to go do you want to go run and tell somebody that if it was two white men holding this camp that it wouldn't have happened And they don't even do seven on sevens. There is no comp. Listen, 
It's a difference. And I, let me be very clear. It's a difference when a quarterback is putting Peyton and Eli putting on QB camps, QB camps, a throwing camp, a passing academy, then you being in the hood, having a direct, you having a seven on seven competition in battle. Come on, man. What are we? It's two different things. It is two completely different environments. You're not, most people are not going to be the same way they are in church and the way they are at the club. It's two different environments. Where Eli and Peyton do their QB camp doesn't, it doesn't get to the level of competition and angst and, 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 and just like aggression that 7 Now, do I believe 707 has gone so, it, it has gone completely just, it's become like AAU basketball for football, which is ridiculous. And that's a whole nother topic. But what my biggest issue is, why is it a racial thing? That's my issue is, why is it a racial thing? Oh, oh my God. Those white men never, never would. Those white men would never put on a seven on seven camp. Those white guys would never sponsor a, a, a team in the hood, seven on seven camp. So they're not the same. They're not the same. It's not. It's just not. And that's why. I'm going to say it. And that's why you see these kids fill power five teams. I don't see. Listen, you can say whatever you want. I don't see. Q, I don't see May, Peyton and Drew Brees. I don't see no all white power five teams. All I see is them little white scrawny quarterbacks. That's because that's all. That's the only way they're getting on the field. It's the only way you're getting on the field, right? Offensive lineman, linebacker, and quarterback. Maybe wide receiver. So that's why they gotta go there because that's the only way they're getting on the field. The kids you talking about are the ones that's filling up stadiums, making college football a billion dollar business. So, yes, are they rough around the edges? Absolutely. But they're walking gold mines at PWIs. Not the, not the white quarterbacks. The black kids from the ghetto, the black kids from the hood, the black kids that are trying to get out. Those are the kids that college football is built. Oh, oh, come on, man. What are we talking about? Come on, man. What are we talking about right now? It's not the same. It's absolutely not the same. And, and, that's, and that's just my biggest issue with the whole thing. Once again, I'm not saying that the fight should have happened. I think both people are in the wrong. It's a bad look for whoever, whoever it was, TSP, Punch, Cam Newton, and all that stupid stuff. It was a worse look for Cam Newton to be talking the trash that he was talking during that event. And I do agree with a lot of coaches that, you know, and I, and I agree to Shannon to a certain extent. You know, there is track. Listen, man, it is – in this day and age, it the kids that are out here in this day and age like talking trash to their mentor, to their heroes. It just is what it is. If anybody remembers when Tyreek Hill did his own camp, kids were talking trash to him, right? I, I remember when uh somebody somebody uh I don't know if it was John Wall or one of the NBA players said they threw a camp and a kid just kept talking trash and he had to school them, didn't let them score. Right. So it's this is just how the generation coming up is. Right. They want to challenge you. They want to show you how good they are. They want to push your buttons. They want to see what they can get right, wrong or indifferent. That just is what it is. Right. So it it's. It, it's a lot. It's just a lot that goes into it. Right. I think the fight in itself is a whole nother section. My issue today, my issue today is simply because of the. Simply because of the comparison to Peyton, like that's the first thing you want to go to, Pey Peyton and Eli and their QB academies. Nah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not rocking with that one. But here we go. Here's the finished part of it. It's, it, 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 it's, it, it's, it's embarrassing. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really embarrassing that somebody take time out of their day, out of yeah. their schedule, out of their life and try to give back. And you disrespectful, ungrateful. Man, Cam, Cam, like I told you, Cam way better than me. Yeah. Because 
I didn't have I don't have patience for my own kids to be disrespectful. I'd be damned if I'm gonna let somebody else kid disrespect me and I'm taking time out of my those are my blood. Right. I got an obligation when they're coming up, but I had an obligation to tell them what's right and wrong. Right. right. And it's always gonna be yes, sir, no, sir. Mm -hmm. My kid, my kids to this. But that's the thing though. That's why you never listen. Shannon is I'm sorry, guys. You know me. I, I'm just different. Shannon is telling you why he doesn't give back. He's telling he's telling you why he don't give back because he doesn't have the pay. Listen, my mom used to my, uh, my mom used to always tell me, don't blame the kids and how they act. Blame the parents that raised them. Right. Because you only know what you know. Shannon is Shannon was taught by his grandmother and grandfather. Yes, sir. No, sir. This is how we do it. This is how it's going to be structured. Not every kid goes through that. No, not every kid goes through that type of rearing and upbringing. My kids, right? My kids know. Yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, ma'am. No, like that's what it is. Like they're taught that because that's what was given to me. And I'm teaching my kids that if you weren't raised that way, you can only give what you've been deposited. That's life. Not all these kids have been deposited into that way. So this is why you see why Shannon don't give back. Because he can't deal with the shortcomings of people who are not in a certain place. I'm going to say that again. He can't deal with the shortcomings of our people who are in certain places because it's it's the issue with great players, right? Great players in coaching, they will say, why can't you do it like me? Why can't you be like me when I when I was when I was do, doing work and I was in the gym, I was working out. Ocho, Ocho, Ocho. I was in the gym. I was in the gym, Ocho. You know, getting 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 that work in. You know, I was I was seven rounds. I was a 12th round draft pick, Ocho. Getting that like people expect people expect their expectations on people, right? But you can't because that's not life. You can't put your, what you would do on people. You can say what you would do, right? Like I would say, hey, I don't like how Dr. McNugget does it, right? I can say that, but I can't say that he's supposed to. I would like to say, I mean, I can, it's my opinion, of course, but it's that I can't make him do anything. Why? Because that's his life. That's just what he's done. That's what he decides to do. Or that's how he was brought up. And that's what he was taught. Right. So it's the same thing. I like Shannon needs to have grace when it comes to kids. These in this age group, because once again, you can only you, kids can only receive what their parents have been deposited in or who has been depositing in them. Right. If you're getting it from the wrong mentor or you're getting it from the wrong person or the wrong place, that's getting deposited into you. And that's what's going to come out. That just that, that just is what it is. You know what I'm saying? So to me, I, I just think he needs grace for those kids. Because, yeah, you said I have patience for my kids or my kids wouldn't do that. Well, because you have an expectation and a standard you've put on your kids. Your kids have your kids have gone through a rearing that most kids probably have not. Your kids will probably live a lifestyle that most kids have probably not. So it's just different. Them kids are bad. But what kids? Like, if the thing about it is this, right? Everybody says this. Everybody talks about, oh, you know, this day and this and that. It, at the end of the day, every, somebody in your life has kept you from going down the wrong path. It's either a parent, a, a parent, a brother, a sister, a cousin who has kept you from going down a path that you should not have gone down because just as influential as doing something good is just as influential to doing something bad. Right. So we have to understand that nobody, nobody just wakes up and says, oh, I'm a goody two shoes. Right. Like I, I, I I'm never going to do anything bad. I'm never going to do anything wrong. That's just not how life works. There is peer pressure. There are influences. And the real question is, is who's influencing these kids? If it's the rappers they're listening to, is it the music that they're listening to? Right. 
Is it the videos that they're watching? Is it the TikTok that they're watching? There's so much into today's high technology area and you can get information so quickly that before you know it, it's a TV raising your kids. It's the music raising your kids, right? And and I'm sorry, I know I'm going real deep than what I wanted to, but you can't say, this is what you can do. You can't tell me that we should do more positive reinforcement because I've hear I hear counselors talk all the time about um, positive reinforcement and positive affirmations. Well, if you're rapping every day, if you're rapping every day about twerking, doing this, shooting somebody, that that's just that's that's the, that's depositing in you. It is. It, it just is. So it, just because you're doing something positive affirmation, it's the same thing as negative affirmation, right? Maya says their coaches are disrespectful, so the players are too. Adults have to be adults. Absolutely. So again, Maya, you're making my point, right? Who is depositing into these kids, right? Who is depositing into these kids? And, le- and listen, we cannot say that Cam Newton is always positive, depositing positive. If Cam Newton is on the sideline saying some of the stuff that you don't know what Cam Newton, we do not know what Cam Newton is saying to these kids. Just because Cam Newton's presence is there does not mean that Cam Newton is speaking positively to all the kids. That means even from the opposing team. Right, because I'll tell you this: if I'm playing against Cam Newton team, and Cam Newton says to me on the opposite team, "You trash," I'm like, I'm gonna say, "You bum ass nigga." That's why you. That's what I'm gonna say. Let's call a spade a spade and not play these games, right? Let's let's call a spade a spade and not play these games. If if I'm playing on the other team, and Cam Newton, I'm playing wide receiver, and Cam Newton's on the sideline, he'd be like, oh, you trash. Oh, boy, you trash. You're going to drop this. I'd be like, you bum-ass nigga. That's why you couldn't make it with the Patriots. What's You bum-ass. That's, that's why you ain't win no Super Bowl. Right? Like, you got to take your shot back. It's just, now. Nah, hopefully my mom didn't hear that because if my mom heard that, I would be in so much trouble, right? But all I'm saying is, it's a lot that goes into this scenario, and I, 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 just, I just want us to take a full overarching view of it. Right. That's that's all I'm saying. There is there's fault to go around. The fight was wrong. It's a bad look for seven on sevens. It's a bad look for the adults. All I'm saying is I think there's just a lot to go around in this premise of what had transpired with the fight. And it's not just the fight. Right. It's just a lot of nuances in there. And I, and I really believe that you the, my biggest issue is this. You can't can't just throw and say oh it would never happen at paying the eli i just i just think that's disingenuous i think that's i think that's just lazy and disingenuous does things need to change absolutely do people need to be probably just the adults need to be over there's there there's there is does there need to be a committee for the uh, for the 707 tournaments or whatever's going on absolutely probably needs to be a governing base a body to oversee some of this stuff to make sure all that stuff is in line but at the end of the day it just is what it is all right, let's go. Let's move on. I love this. Shout out to my guy, Emery. All right, we definitely going to try to get him on, right? Shout out to my guy, Emery. He has a he has a top 10, right? He has a top 10. And let me get to this real quick. Uh, where I put that joke at? Oh. Uh, Oh, it's in. It's on this. Oh no, I gotta go to. Let me see. Ten HBCU players. Man, it is. Listen, I gotta. I gotta get some AC up in this office because I'm telling you right now, this junk is. Yeah, I, I feel like I am dying in this joker. I feel like I. <laughs> I feel like I'm in an oven. It is on four fifty. It is like pre me right now oh god and i only got one light i don't even got my office light on i need to open this window or something yeah I got, oh, shit, I'm, I'm sorry listen, i ain't about to be i'm about to open this window hold on i'm cooking up in this up.
All right, I don't even know what's going on, my Jake. My window won't even open, okay? Jesus Christ. My window won't even open. Hold on. I'm in Ohio. It shouldn't even be this hot in this damn room, man. I'm telling you, God, the almighty is... <laughs> I feel like I'm... Boy... Jesus, my window not even working. It won't even come out. It got like a double lock on it. Like, what the hell, man? I'm sorry. Anyway, anyway, let's get to this top 10. Jesus Christ. All right. Uh, window. Here we go. So before I get here, let me go down to 10. All right. So starting at number 10, shout out to my guy, Emery Hunt. Right. Uh, let me go down here. Number 10 is DB Joshua Howard from Benedict. Let me zoom in this for y'all. There we go. All right. Six foot 194 got better as the week went on, showing some adjusted step up in competition. In this case is Mikey Victor. Some teams, him as a future safety. Shout out to number 10. Number nine, Willie Drew. This, he was invited to the senior bowl was one of his favorite HBCU prospects in the class. He started off the season with a bang at Virginia State, upset went over Virginia's Norfolk State. Drew made his way to the Reese Senior Bowl, had an up-and-down week, but still competed well. All right? Hey, this is one of my guys. I love this Bama Jordan Toes. All right? Toes, six foot one, has excellent ball skills and instincts. He will find a way to be around the ball by the end of the play. His versatility was on display at the Legacy Bowl, playing more in the alley as a nickel defender. I didn't see him a lot. I didn't see him do that a lot at Morgan State. So it's good to get a glimpse of what projection would look like for him doing it. For more draft coverage, you can hear twice a week with this first pick. Uh, here we go. Keep going. Number seven, Evan Gregor uh, Gregory. Six foot four is a rock solid as he come off the offensive lineman, which I've seen firsthand. Having been on the broadcast for two of Gregory's games this season, I believe he have a home and a guard as a pro. All right, Tariq Stewart. Listen, he made a lot of heads turn. Uh, my boy Blue definitely told he stood out as well. It's another prospect who is six foot five, who is in season tape match. What we saw at the Legacy Bowl, his aggressiveness, where you would want to be because it didn't hinder his ability to do his job. Noah Washington, listen, linebacker DN, six foot four, 275. My God. Brings great versatility to the table as a defensive lineman. He was kept, uh, uh, capi his capability of playing any technique up front plays them well. He was well coached at Morgan State, and coming out to the HBC League Bowl was a great chance to see him in an unfamiliar setting in which he thrived. He got long arms and core strength to be disruptive in presence. All right, let's go to the top four. Jarvion Howard, you already know what it is. That bad man from Syracuse came out all corn state doing his thing. Five foot ten was one of the most impressive tailbacks in the swag during his career. Scouts were familiar with his game on just that alone. What really got people talking was a stellar workout combine. Ran a four five in the forty, jumping a ten eight in the broad, having a solid on field workout. His comp, Devonte Freeman, with how assertive and explosive he is as a runner, I think that's a great comp. All right, coming at number three, man, you already know that bad man, Davius Richard. North Carolina Central. It's unfortunate Richard suffered a leg injury during the first drive. We're definitely going to get into that. Of the HBCU Legacy Boys, he ran into a touchdown on the opening possession. But reports coming out of the New Orleans are that he's doing fine and will be okay. Going back to the week, he had a hula ball. was really impressive. He was able to carry that over to the HBCU Combine Legacy Bowls this week. Listen, I love Emory. Sandata Anderson to me is not it. I, I just, I, the tape just, if you watch the tape, it just doesn't tell you that he's it. But that's, you know, hey, six foot three, 249. So, hey, I'll tell you what, Grambling State been lying because they put that Bama at six foot five. Is another postseason stud who really stood out the East West Shrine Bowl. What immediately jumped out at me was his athleticism doing the individual drills. Anderson moved fluidly as he, if he were a tight end. When you combine the size, athleticism, and the upside due to the raw nature of his game, you can understand why he's high on the list. In my opinion, he's a major combine snub, as he would have tested through the roof. The tape isn't good. Uh, and last but not least, Mikey Victor. 
I think he's I think he is going to be a six or seven round pick easy. Uh Victor, six foot two, two twelve, attended both the Hula, Hula and the East West Shrine Bowl and performed exceptionally well. His combine, he combines great size athleticism for the position and more than held his own on the one-on-ones versus upper level competition. Some teams view him as an outside corner, while some see him as a potential safety convert. Either way, the former Hornet definitely garnered a lot of attention and raised a lot of eyebrows. Listen, I'm gonna say this. I think the I think the snub and I and I tweeted this. Um, I think I my honorable mention is John Huggins, right? My, my honorable mention is John Huggins uh, from Jackson State. I, I definitely believe he just tested too well, and his tape is amazing, and he just has all the fit, physical attributes that you're looking for. Um, is is he's it's just all there. It's just all there. Mikey Victor, what Mikey Victor reminds me of. He he reminds me of a like a like a like a a, a Richard Sherman, right? Not length wise, but just the style of play, right? More of a zone corner, can play man if you need him to. Long and rangy, uh, can can run with, can run with the best of them. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, when I first saw his tape, I was like, ah, eh. but I, after I kept watching it, I kept watching, I was like. He's solid. He's a he's just a solid. He's a solid corner. He's an absolutely solid corner. Um, the Lamonte Green not on there. Listen, I, I gotta be honest with a lot of you guys. You gotta stop looking at your. If you've watched a player right for a long time, you have to understand that this isn't just about what he did. You have to look at. He's not going against swag players. He's going against all the players in the country. And Jablonski and Patrick are just undersized. They, first of all, their tape is not for what position they would be playing in the NFL. Jablonski and Patrick are linebackers. Six foot, six foot one. You're not playing D tackle at six foot. You know, like you're not. You're not. Right. So especially Patrick running like a four, five, four or four, four, five. He's a he should have been playing linebacker, okay. But when you have coaches and is no shot to buddy, but when you have coaches who, who want to win and win now, and they're gonna put Mr. Campbell talked about we talked about it earlier today, right? Um, if you're looking for a guy, you gotta win. The coaches are trying to win now. They're not thinking about, oh, your draft stock and what you would fit better as and what you would go and what your comp is for the NFL. It, they don't care about none of that, right? At the end of the day is how do you help me win games? And you help me win games by being the best player at this position, right? And Patrick and Jablonski, and Jablonski had a hell of a, a legacy ball. He really did, right? He, he really showed up. But those guys, are they're just, they're just, they're literally linebackers. They should have been, Weak and middle linebackers, but you know it is what it is. All right. Also, why Cedric Anderson of Grandma State, the kid, six three, almost two hundred pounds. He had a really good week. Who cool. could be an undrafted free agent? I absolutely agree with that as well. Um, I liked. I th listen before we get into the main event, right? I loved. I loved the meat. The meat. The Gaither side of the defense was just amazing. I'm listen. That Miak, that listen, that Gaither defense, what that that linebacker in secondary was just unfreaking real. Them Bamas was just unreal. They were everywhere. It's like they were dog, dog. Listen, like I, it's it's only like last year when I went to Legacy Bowl, it was all D line, right? It was like all D line, just. And Blue Kid contested it. The, the SWAC had the best D-line, period. I'm talking about, I'm, well, yeah, mm, mm, yeah, with Cam, with Jordan, with uh, the Bama from Southern, uh, the, the PB guy who went to Southern, Dumas, right? It was just, it, to me, it was just a battle of the trenches from last year. This year, I think it was a better overall defense. Right, like with linebackers and DBs, it was just a. But that Gaither side was different. That Gaither side was different. I'm not gonna lie to you. Them Bamas, no homo. Them Bamas was long and rangy and tall. They was they was big. No homo. You know what I'm saying? So that hey, that Miak defense was just crazy. I mean, the Fayetteville State kids and 
Yeah, they that, that gave their defense was just unreal. That that was a really, really, really good. That was a really good defense. I can't, I can't, I can't fake on that. It was really good. All right, let's get into it. For what you all, what all you Bamas came to see. All right. Um, listen, we're gonna give you. I'm gonna give you the good, bad, and the ugly. All right. I'm gonna give you the good. I'm gonna give you the bad. And I'm gonna give you the ugly. All right. Here we go. The good. Hey, listen. The NFL Network. The NFL Net. Listen. They made this game feel like you were watching a high-level football game, and we all know we were not. Okay, but the production, the commentating. They made the game more interesting than it was. Can we just be honest about that? The commentators made the game way more interesting than it could it had ever have been. All right? Excellent broadcast. I'm just a Bucky Brooks, Charles Davis. Excellent, excellent, excellent broadcast. I can't say enough things about the broadcast. It was just, it was just amazing. It was. I, I mean, the graphics were amazing. They, the NFL Network, really came, showed up, and showed out for them. I really, you gotta give them a one. That was a one. Kudos. Shout out to them. All right. The good number two. Hey, listen. The Swack and Miak defensive players were amazing. Absolutely amazing. I mean, the Miak. To me, just a little, I, I think the Miak just was just a, a tad bit better. Just a tad bit better. But I, I really believe, I really believe that uh, they, did a, they did an excellent job. I mean, the defensive players are just amazing in this game. Um, you can't, I couldn't say enough about them. They, I mean, they really had me on the edge of my seat. They really came to play. It was just good stuff. All right. So it was good. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, what I, I really love this secondary because the years that I the year that I went, the secondary wasn't that good. It really last year's secondary really it was just like it was okay. Like, I mean, you had Nugget, you had a couple guys, but it wasn't it wasn't to the level to what I saw this pass in, right? <sighs> And last but not least, it really, it really hurts my heart to say this. It really hurts my soul. But last but not least, all right. That's enough of that. All right. <laughs> Listen, if you okay, I'm not. I don't. I don't want to talk about halftime. I don't care about halftime. Okay, I don't. I don't stay and watch halftime, so I don't care nothing about that. So I'm not even going. I'm not even going to talk about the halftime. Right. What I want to talk about is this: when the game was going on, and you heard the boom in the stands. Ah, that was HBCU football. Like, I got chills. I'm not even going, I'm not faking when I tell you. Ah, I got chills. Because that's HBC. You heard them in the back. They trying to interview Babas. The boom is booming. You know, it, oh, man, it was lit. It was lit. That whole fourth quarter, oh, it was absolutely lit. Like, I was like, heck yeah, you can hear them in the broadcast. Oh, man, that was, ah, was different, man. Uh, they need to bring a band every year, okay? They really do. They need to bring They need to bring a band every year. If it's Norfolk, Southern, I don't give a damn who they bring, okay? They got to bring a band every year. And, and Jackson, they set a standard, man. They set a standard. Like I said, I don't care about halftime. I didn't watch halftime. I don't give two shits about halftime, right? But the way they played during the football game, oh, man, it was A1. Absolutely, it was it was it was a one. It was, it was, it was, it, I was like with the NFL network broadcast with the boom playing. Oh man, it was a one. 
It's absolutely that way. Can't even get can't I gotta give him everybody, I gotta give him everybody, everybody. Gotta give, gotta give, gotta give, gotta give, gotta give him kudos. Gotta give him kudos. All right, gotta give him kudos. You know what I'm saying? So they do grandma. Oh yeah, yeah. That was, grandma was ass then. I, I didn't hear nothing about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, that Gremlin man must have been ass because I ain't hear nothing. But you know they got the little handicap wheelchair. They got the little handicap drum anyway, so they don't really, they don't really count. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, Jack State they killed that joint. I ain't even gonna hold you. Man, they killed that joint. I, I was man when I heard him through the broadcast, I was like, oh, this thing is lit. I said, oh, that fourth, that fourth quarter. Like that last four or five minutes of the fourth quarter. Oh man, I thought it was a real game. I ain't even gonna hold you. I was like, oh, we, we in here. Let's get it. Let's go. And to me, I'm gonna say it again. To me, that's what the swag needs to do. The swag needs to have it. The swag needs to have the band just let them play, man. Just let the bands play, bro. Like it it, it just it's to me, it, like even watching the game, it just felt different. Just let it just let them play. Just let him go. You know what I'm saying? I feel like, I don't know if anybody seen that movie, The Sixth Man, where Marlon Wayne's at the end of the movie, he like tosses the ball up and his brother's a ghost and he's about to catch it. He's like, the way, let it go, man. You know, that's how I felt. Like, just let him, just let him play. Just let him play, man. God, no. So, it was, it, yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, gotta, gotta give it to him. Gotta give it to him. So, it was, it was good. All right, let's get to the bat. The bad and the bad was bad. Hey, listen, them quarterbacks were ass. Them quarterbacks were absolutely ass. I'm not going to say your names because you know the position you played, okay? If you had QB in front of your name, you were ass. <laughs> Everybody, okay? Except Davius Richard. <laughs> Everybody but Davis Richards, okay, just absolutely stinking the junk, garbage truck juice, stinking the junk up. And the worst thing, okay, and then the worst thing was you got the SWAC Player of the Year looking lost in the sauce. I'm talking about that boy. Don't know what's up. Down, left, right. He just looked lost. And I keep, t- listen, man, I kept trying to tell y'all, Bevels. That's why, one, he shouldn't have been a swag. I said, I said he shouldn't have been a swag player offensively. I said Ladarius Owen should have been. And you can go clip any, you can go clip anything I said. I said Ladarius Owens should have been the swag offensive player of the year. I said it. I said it, and I said it. Perry was on that bandwagon of, oh, Musa, Ladarius Owens, didn't do enough touchdowns. I, I, I didn't care nothing about that. The, the Bama was not that good. Okay? Second of all, let me just say that. Let me just, let me just, let me say this. I told Bama, I said, you have to incorporate the play caller when you're talking about quarterbacks. I've said that on numerous occasions. Bama's be acting like I don't know what I'm talking about. And I tell y'all all the time, you have to link in the play caller with the quarterback. Right? Musa is only as good as Willie dials it up. And I told you there were plays where Bama's would be scot-free out in the open, just them and Jesus yelling Ali Ali Oxen free. And he, <laughs> he just, and it, that was just wide open. And he threw it. I've seen, we have all seen Musa miss Bama's with just Peter, Paul, and Joseph around him. And he just missed. We've seen it. Okay. And I've seen Willie draw plays up. To where it is nobody in five yards of a receiver, and now Musa the best thing since sliced bread. And I've also said this. I've also said this. If it's in front of, if you keep it in front of the hat, listen. Let me tell you something. Musa inside the hashes can't deal. Can't can't deal with him. He will. Musa inside the hashes. He will kill you every day of the week. If it's inside them hashes, 
Oh, best believe he about to hibachi you. He about to cook you. He about to cook you. If it's outside the numbers, oh, he out here like this. <sighs> Seven again, craps. <laughs> Come on, daddy need a new pair of shoes. Snake eyes, okay? It's a it's a crab shoot. You might hit, you might not hit, you might get your point, you might not get your point. He out there looking like Ashy Larry. <laughs> you don't know. You don't know, but that's Musa. That's been Musa. And I'm and I'ma stand on it. I've been telling Coach KJ Black that for the past year. I said, Coach KJ, he is not that guy. I've been telling, I've been telling Coach KJ Black. I said, Coach, he's not that guy. Oh man, Musa. I said, he's not that guy. He's not that guy. He's a glorified game manager, and and that and that's that's with Fam you. If you take Musa off of Fam you and you put Musa on. Jackson State or Southern or whoever, they losing the same amount of games they're losing because he doesn't change. He does not change the game for you. He doesn't. He does not change the game for you. He is literally a kid. You give a coloring book and say color in the lines. He can do that perfectly. If you tell him to paint a picture, he's like, huh? What? Paint what picture? A picture of what? A picture of whatever you think of, Musa, of whatever I think of. Yeah, whatever you think of. I'm not thinking. Then how you going to paint a picture? That's why I'm asking you. That's Musa. That's Musa. So it is what it is. Quinn Q Dub, listen, the fade route that you saw Q Dub throw, that's Q Dub. Right? Quentin Williams. That's Quentin Williams. But all the other stuff you see him miss, that's Quentin Williams. Like, that's just how that's just how sporadic these guys are. And listen, their offensive line, their offensive line is not the best. Listen, I can be a winner when you Okay. Okay. Oh my God. Here we go. Here we go. We we're going we going down this. We want to we want to go here. We want to do this. All right, let's do it. Let's 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 let me let me explain something to you. Kelly, right? Fam, you was so loaded. So loaded. My son could have been swag player of the year. If you have put, if you have put my nine-year-old son at quarterback of fam you, they probably would have lost one. They probably would have lost two games, right? You probably would have lost, you probably would have lost the Alabama State game if my son was playing quarterback. The rest of the games, are oh, we winning? We winning. That's how loaded FAMU was. That's how loaded. You put my son behind that offensive line, we winning the swag. You put my son behind that offensive line with them players, Marcus Riley, uh, Wu, uh, uh, Kamari Young, uh, who else? Uh, uh, Nick Dixon. A uh, man to go, uh, 36 running backs. We're winning. And that dark cloud defense, we're winning. We're winning, okay? We're winning. So d- don't miss me with the, oh, he's a winner. No, he just did. He just wasn't bad enough to lose. And the team was so good that y'all won despite of your quarterback. Okay, let's. I want to be very clear about that, and I'm gonna and uh, and listen. I'm gonna stand on this fact. I'm going to stand on it. Willie Simmons. I'm and I'm and I and I mean and I love Willie. I love Willie to death. Okay, I love Willie to death. I'm I'm gonna stand on this. Willie Simmons doesn't want a quarterback to make him. He wants to make the quarterback right. Let me get it. I'm gonna break it down even further. Willie Simmons doesn't want a Patrick Mahomes, right? Because with a Patrick Mahomes. He gonna do Patrick Mahomes stuff, right? He wants a Brock Purdy. He wants a Alex Smith. He wants a Dak Prescott, like somebody that you can mold and tell him exactly what to do, how you wanted to do it, right? You don't want the you don't you're not gonna want the Andrew Bodies. You're not gonna want the you know to Jacoby and Morgan's to a certain extent. Why? Because he. I think him and Shadur would be A1. Him and Shadur would be A1. A1. Because Shadur needs a system 
That and he tell he told you in the conference. I know all y'all members have seen it when he talked about the offense. He didn't like all the option plays, right? Because he wants to know what you're doing, so he knows where to go with it on the defense, right? He don't that 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 works for Willie, right? Go here, okay, cool, boom, 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 bam, right? He doesn't want the the innovate. I run around, I see this, and da da da. da. No, he doesn't want that. That's just my personal opinion. This is my personal opinion. This is my personal opinion, right? So. But I think it's because Willie knows he's such a great play caller that if you just give him somebody that he can mold and dictate to and set it up, he's like, I, I'll draw it up. I can draw it up with the best of them. So it's not a shot to Willie, right? It's just he, he – I think it's when you're so confident in your skills and what you can do because you can clearly see he he, he really just ran circles around the swag offensively. It just wasn't – it wasn't it wasn't nothing, right? It, it just wasn't nothing, right? So – it just is what it is. So we'll see. That's just my that's just my personal opinion. So but that's how I feel that. All right. Let's get into the ugly. Oh god damn. Let's get into the ugly. Now, listen. The ugly. Oh, and it's ugly. This Bama and his offensive staff. This Bama and his whole offensive staff. Ugly. Ugly. Okay. Simple. And what makes this even worse? Oh, what makes this even worse is you already know how in the NCC you already got a rivalry. I can only imagine what's going to happen on media day. Oh boy! If you thought something was going, you thought something was said last year. Oh my God! Oh my God! You know, Trey Oliver bringing that smoke. Let's continue on, right? This is what happened today. Let's read this. This is from Trey Oliver's Twitter account. <clears throat> me 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 me. I promised he would not have played. If I knew that those dumbass coaches, <laughs> I feel like Kevin Hart when he was talking about that. No, his mama date. He's like, I would tell you to tell. Oh, yo, dumbass! Hey, listen. He said them dumbass. Co- <laughs> Woo! Boy, 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 boy. Let me read that again. He said, I promise. Okay. And you got to read like a black person. Yo, word, word, real talk. I promise you, B. He would have not have played if I knew that those dumbass coaches <laughs> were going to run him. He should have never have left the pocket. You want to run? You want to run handed off to those all American backs? Make it. Make sense. And this is, you know, in, in correlation of, you know, uh, Davis Richards getting hurt, you know. So, and, and <laughs> shut up, listen, man, I, I wrote an article not too long ago on FCS, uh, FCS football. Y'all can go check it out. And I called Trey Oliver like our reincarnation of Dion, like the true HBCU like superstar celebrity. And I think Trey Oliver does not get enough respect for just him putting the culture on his back the way he does, because think about it and I'm going to get back into this, but think about what Trey Oliver is. He is like the culture, like Dion is the culture in, in his own, like, you know, celebrity way, but Trey Oliver is the culture when it comes to just saying what he feels coaching having hella five good ass teams and really putting foot to ass right like he's like yo i'm about that life so you gotta you gotta cherish guys like this because you don't find a lot of guys who are willing to speak their mind on public platforms and really tell you how they feel so you know what i'm saying you got the fred mcnair's you got the eric dooley's and them boring ass press conferences that's why you gotta give credit to even uh Eddie Rob, right? Because he he spoke his mind. He he like, hey, Dion ain't about to punk me. I, uh, he ain't swag. I'm swag, right? So you get those type of lift services, and I, and I and I appreciate that. Now, 
let's move forward. Now, oh, leave it to beaver ass. You know, oh, leave it to beaver ass. You know what I'm saying, Ninja? He uh, he go coach Diego Ryland. Now, mind you, he is on the off. He's on the offensive staff. He's on Team Gaither. No, team, yeah, he's on Team Gaither. He's on the Team Gaither staff, right? And he says this is his response to Trey Oliver, and he he put it underneath the the tweet. Y'all can go check it out. It's football. For anyone who has something to say, the play was zone to the back. The young man instincts took over. As the end crashed, he pulled it. Injuries could happen at any time during the game. This is very distasteful to come at a championship caliber coach with a PhD. Wow. Okay. Okay, Beaver. You know, that, that's your opinion. But you know, you know me. I come with the receipts. And I'm not going, I'm not going to listen to leave it to Beaver. Let's see the tape. Leave it to Beaver. Let's see the tape. Because you know your boy, oh, I'm about tape, okay? Now, if you know anything about an inside zone, right, you know that it's blocked a particular way. But what I want you all to focus on, if you can, right? Matter of fact, I'm not even going to do it like this. I'm going to share the screen. Let me bring this down. I'm going to, let me, bring this up, let me. Go downloads. You know what? I'm gonna bring it. All right. So, as you can see right here, right there, if you look at the, uh, I gotta show you a different way because this is really gonna bother me. Um, hold on, because I, I gotta, I gotta zoom in, and I, I don't like. That y'all can't see what I'm trying to point out. So let me just do something real quick. And I'll be right back. All right. All right, it's uploaded. So let me... All right, uh, share screen, window, boom. All right. Oh, let me see. That's not what I want to do. Let me see, stop. Share, entire screen. There you go. All right, here we go. So y'all can see this, right? Everybody can see this, right? Let me know if you can see this purple thing. Now, I want you to focus on this guy. This guy is going to tell you what the play is, right? There's a lot of keys in this. You got pullers. You got all this. But this guy right here is going to tell you if it was a inside zone or inside zone read. That is two different things, okay? Let's watch. Now, let me mute this. Now, let me be very clear. If this is an inside zone, he blocks this guy. This is who he blocks, right? Because what you don't want this guy to do is you don't want this guy to crash down and make this tackle. So if it's an inside zone, this guy comes across and he makes this block. Let's see what happens. He does it. He fakes and he becomes a lead blocker for, you guessed it, Davius Richards. So that then tells me that this play was an option play. Zone read. It was a two-way go. This play tells me, just off that design alone, that it was not. See, the problem is this. The problem is this. You cannot say what he said. It was a zone to the back. He's lying. He's lying because he's not telling you the full story. The full story is, is that it was a zone read to the back, which means Davius had Davis 
had an option to keep it. And that's what he decided to do. So you telling me that you have an all American court. Listen, let me, let me be very clear. I'm you got an all American quarterback who is your top prospect in this game. I'm not calling no damn zone read nothing. It is a, hey, 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 Davis, hand the ball off to the back and get the hell out the way. ISO, duo, inside zone, those are the plays. Not inside zone read, not outside zone read, not, what, we're going to the right two, four, not, not 42 zone read or whatever crap you want to call it, right? It's none of that. It's none of that. It is a straight power. We're going power I, power O, whatever you want to do, whatever you want to off tackle, sweep, it don't matter. Just run the dang ball. I'm going to give you another option of it, right? Because, you know, me, like, like I said, I'm about receipts. So let's, I'm going to give you another view of it. So that's view number one. All right. Let me get the second angle so you can see some more of this foolishness so you know that it was what it was. All right, here's the second one. Now, once again, closer angle to it. This guy is his lead blocker, the white boy. And that's what happens. I ain't going to show you the rest because the rest you already know what kind of happens. But I just want to make very, I want to make it very clear that this leave it to beaver ass ninja is lying. He's lying. The tape tells you otherwise. That was an inside zone read. Basic. Super, super basic. His ass deserves to get hemmed up. Now, I know a lot of you Bamas is asking me in, 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 at the crib, you know, you're watching the show. Scotty, who's to blame? Hmm. I, oh, I, I, I got criminals. I, I, I got names. First up, on who's the blame? Oh! Doug Lazy I Williams. Oh, sir, you are wanted. Doug Lazy I Williams is at fault here. You know why this Bama is at fault? Let me explain to you why he's at fault. Because Lazy Eye last year, now mind you, this is Isaiah Bolden. The tweet that you're looking up at the top left, let me, let, me, let me make myself smaller. The tweet that you're looking up at the top left, that's Isaiah Bolden. Isaiah Bolden was the only HBCU player to get drafted. He sent a tweet underneath my tweet and said, facts. Last year, they didn't let me participate in the HBCU Combine if I didn't play in the game. If I didn't play in the game. Let me tell you, let me tell you what one of my sources did. Right? Let me tell you, let me tell you what one of my sources told me. Right? They said... Nobody wants to get on Doug's bad side. He has way too many connections and is too influential. He was pissed that Sunday out Anderson wouldn't come play at the Legacy Bowl. He wanted to come for interviews, but Lazy Eye said no. Plus, the big names in the room would talk negatively about players that don't do exactly what he says to do. And lastly, he said the whole staff was pissed off at Jarvion because he came, did practice, he did the combine, did practice, and then dipped, right? So he mad. He was mad at Jarvion for doing that, okay? 
So Lazy Eye pressured, peer pressured Davius into playing in this game. He did. He absolutely did. Lazy Eye peer pressured Davius Richards into playing in this game. Now, come on, man. Let me just, that's criminal number one. Criminal number two is Larry, I don't call play Scott. Oh, yeah, this Bama got to, oh, he got to come up to the desk. He got to come on the carpet. Larry, I don't call play Scott. Listen, I don't know who called this play. I don't. All I know is that I'm, I'm telling you this from here on out. No HBCU head coaches should be a part of this bowl game anymore. What they should do is what the East West game does with the Shrine Bowl and all them bowl, all the major bowl games. They bring NFL assistants down to the bowl to coach this game, right? It's the same thing for the HBCU Legacy Bowl. These head coaches should not be a part of the game, period. Take them out. Perry said this last week before the injury even happened, right? They should not be a part of this game anymore. Get all black NFL assistants, have them come down, have them coach in the game, why? Because in practice and stuff like that, they're telling these kids, these coaches don't know what it takes to go to the next level. They don't. They don't know what NFL practices look like. They don't know what how they scout NFL players. They don't know what that who that third squad or practice squad players are or why that practice squad player met. They don't know all the intangibles of how the NFL works. But listen, Coaches that are at the NFL level coming back to tell players, hey, man, listen, I like your heart. I like this, but I promise you, this probably isn't the best thing for you. You might want to do this. You might want to look at this position. You might want to start doing this. You need to work on this, right? That's what you need. You need those type of coaches, right? You need those type of coaches to let you know where your deficiencies are at. To where, hey, work on this. You need to do this. Hey, listen. Can't be running no 4-8 playing this position. Got to get that time down. You need to be a little taller. Can you do this? Can you make this happen? How are you on special teams? All those type of stuff, right? You need that type of insight into the world of the NFL, and they don't have that at the HBCU Legacy Bowl. So get rid of this Bama, right? Mr. Larry, I don't call plays, Scott. Get rid of this Bama and get some NFL assistance down there ASAP, okay? Absolutely ASAP. And last but not least, Oh, I ain't even put the Beaver's name in there, but he on this next one, though. He on this next one, though. He on this next one, though. I'm looking. Hey, listen. Reward up to $10 million for any information to understand the stupidity of three of these three ninjas. All right. I need... I'm giving a reward for $10 million if anybody can explain the stupidity of these three ninjas, okay? I got Larry Can't Call Play Scott. I got Doug Lazy Eye Williams. And I got Diego Lion Beaver Ass Ryan. Okay? Oh, swiper no swiping ass Diego, right? You know, Diego, uh, whatever, all right? So him too. He part of the he he a part of the crescendo. He a part of the group. You know what I'm saying? I was watching the Sopranos. He he, he a part of that La Nostra Familia. He a part of this stupidity family. All these members deserve to get locked up. Locked up. So who is that for? These three ninjas. All three of these ninjas. So, mm-hmm. Now, call lines are open, 518-263-8124, 518-263-8124. Call lines will be open. Wait till you hear the white lady. 
Now, before I call lines are open, before I move to the call lines, I want to say this. What is the future of the Legacy Bowl? I think if they're not... You are the only participant in the conference. All participants are muted. If there's not a major overhaul, and when I mean major, I mean major overhaul. I'm talking about you have to you have to first allow players. First of all, I don't, you might let me, let me be very clear because people was getting on me in my tweet and I said top prospects probably won't participate in the Legacy Bowl. But let's be very clear. There's only so many top prospects from HBCUs. Every, you might get four or five, right? You still got to fill the team. Four or five Bamas ain't going to fill the team. Now, are, are people wanting to come see those top prospects? Absolutely, but you should have watched the season, all right? So your top prospects aren't going to participate. But the issue I have is if this – this is where you got to talk to Doug Williams and you got to really understand his premise behind it. Because if you're telling me – if you're telling the public that the HBCU Legacy Bowl is supposed to be for the betterment of HBCU players, but you're getting upset with players because they don't want to play in the game. Like, what sense does that make? I, I really, I, I, if I'm being honest, though, they really should just turn it, they should take the, they should take the combine, listen to me now, they should take the combine and literally just make it a full-fledged HBCU combine to where you invite over 100, 150 kids, right? And then from the 100 to 150 kids, then you have a special group of kids that play in the HBCU Legacy Bowl. And that gives you enough backups so if people start dropping out and pulling out, that you can just plug and play, right? So if you come on, on Monday for the HBCU Combine, you do all your testing, and you tell Doug and his, and his staff, hey, listen, I'm only here to do the Combine. I'm not going to stay. Well, now they know I can plug in players that are currently already here. Hey, quarterback, can you stay for the game? Davius Richards is pulling out. It's a great opportunity for you to be in the position. Oh, yeah, sure. Right? That's that's what it's about. That's what to me, that's what it should be about. Right? You know what I'm saying? So it's 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 getting it's getting that all situated. If it's 50, 60, it may not, it don't have to be 100 players. Maybe it's 70 players, maybe it's 80 players. But that combine should legitimately be a combine for HBCU players, right? It shouldn't be kids on HBCUs begging to be in the combine. It should be open to all seniors who are graduating who are part of HBCUs if that's what it's supposed to be for. If it's supposed to be a public platform and a, a public a promotion of HBCU players because you don't know who going to run a 4-2. You don't know who going to run a 4-3. You don't know. You just don't know. And you don't know who's going to blow scouts away and make them go back and watch tape. You just don't know. You don't know who's going to show up and show out at the HBC Legacy Bowl game. You just don't know. So to me, I just think it should be open to a lot more kids and have a lot more flexibility in that. So, you know, it is what it is, and we'll see. We'll see where it goes from here. But overall, top, I wouldn't be surprised if top, if top prospects say F this game. Oh, God damn. F them people. All right? F, F them folks. Because it's like, yo, I'm not about to get myself hurt. And Davis, and I want to be very clear, and this just ain't on the HBCU level, right? You, This ain't on the HBCU level. You can't get mad at kids pulling out of bowl games because this is the exact reason why. This is the reason why that kids don't play in bowl games because they don't mean anything if you, if you have aspirations to make it to the NFL. If Let me tell you this. Let me say this. If... Davius Richards was a lock four fifth round pick, and he had just dislocated his ankle. 
Do you know how much money that Bama would have lost? You already at a disadvantage because you're an HBCU kid. And then on top of that, you get hurt. It's not worth it. I don't care what y'all talking about. I don't care nothing about nothing. It's not worth it for top prospects to play in this game. I'm saying it now. I'm going to always say it. Uh, JB, coming to you. Then Dre, coming to you. Hey, Scotty. How you doing, sir? What's up, man? Okay, first of all, I think I'm ready to cash in on that $10 million reward. I could tell you the reason why the stupidity stuff is there, why it's happening. Um, and it goes to a little something, which is what we do. Namely, the reason why people get upset about this is the same reason why you will not see NFL assistant coaches coaching in this game. For them, elevating to HBCU means everything HBCU only. If a NFL assistant coach were to come in and not t- – uh, 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 um, instead of an HBCU head coach, I'm telling you, Scott, if people see this like, oh, you don't think HBC coaches are good enough, so you got to get other people to come in. They wouldn't see it as NFL. They would see it as outsiders coming in and taking on their stuff. Um, in terms of the top players coming, if you got a kid who's a third or fourth round pick, especially in the FCS, he's not going to go to Legacy Bowl, period. Nine times out of ten, that kid is going to be in the main NFL combine, he's not going to go to an HBCU combine. Yeah, and I think that one thing that one thing that the uh, um, the creators of this game have to understand is that it's like, okay, you know what? Not everyone while it's good. Like, hey, some people they just see it as just another opportunity. I guarantee you, Doug Williams probably got offended because it's like, wow, you don't think that we're good enough. You think the white man dresses colder? They say so. Guess what? We're not going to let you do A, B, and C. Mm. People are gatekeeping. This is gatekeeping in public. You're seeing it live and in color. Now, uh, regarding the first topic that you made, because I don't get into it, I guess I go one thing about this. I'm in the public school system. And um, I served as a classroom teacher, district coach, and now like a teacher coach at the high school level too. I've seen what happens when some of our kids, they get black teachers in front of them acting one kind of way. White person comes in, they're a complete 180. So I kind of see what Shannon was coming from to a certain degree, because when you have uh, uh, some of these schools in which white teachers come in, these kids are angels, because they don't want to say nothing bad for our white folks, et cetera, et cetera. But if a black person comes in, oh, he's just another black, uh, a, black, uh, a black guy or just another end for it. So for some of these people, it's about how it's seen, or it's like, um, we don't want to put on airs in front of white folks, so black folks is okay because they're just like us. Just a different perspective to put on it. No, I, I listen. I don't know why that. I, I, I definitely agree with the gatekeeping, right? Because yeah. it's it's just what black. Um, I don't want to go there. It's what people do when they get in the position. Of, no, no, I don't. I don't want to go there because I hate the general. I'm, I'm trying to get out this generalization stuff, right? But. My thing, my issue is this. My issue is with when people get power, right? When people get power and they and they feel like they can throw it around, these are the situations because you feel like HBCU kids are already, you know, under 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 pushed, under marketed. So you're like, oh, come to my game or else. It's, it's like it's it's really like some state property type stuff, right? It's like a get down or lay down type of situation, and and it shouldn't be that. It should be an open invitation of, hey, listen. We're here to help. If we can help, we're here to help. If not, then it's cool. It shouldn't be some situation like, now nah, you gonna play. No, 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 no. You go go no, you gonna play. Like, what? That's where we at right now. It's like Doug Williams trying to bully people into playing in the game. Like for real? This is what we got into it. So if that's the case, I wouldn't tell none of these jokers to play in it. But the kids need it, but the kids need it so bad. Mostly a lot of these kids, a lot of these D2, D3, NAIA kids, they need this opportunity just to be on a national platform. Exactly. If you're right about the whole like uh, um the gatekeeper, there's one thing you mentioned though, Scotty. When you have uh people who feel like, and I hate to say the word inferiority complex, but when you feel that you're not as tough as you think you are, you're going to do things like that. You're going to try to throw your weight around because you want people to know, say, hey, you know what, I'm the big dog, I'm the big chief. But if it's about helping kids out at, at the next level, you have to do that because it's about that in the first place. But what some people still think it's about them, once again, it's like that fine chick at the club who's 
who's over 45, but still would act like she's like in her 20s. <laughs> you ain't got it no more. But some of these OGs at our schools, they still want to act like, like they run it. So I was like, dude, this ain't about you no more. Mm-hmm. This ain't about you. This ain't about the legacy of fill in the blank. This is about the next generation. And a lot of our people cannot handle that because they haven't been told. Say, dude, sit down somewhere. This ain't about you no more. Move on. Move over. But when you have people who are, uh, who are used to being like told that they're the hot shit, when they're used to being the hot person, when they've had people kissing me at their entire careers, and when you're told, hey, you know, you're this regular guy, that's very, very tough for people who are prideful and people who are used to getting their way. That's fair. Hey, JB, as always, man, I appreciate the call. Thank you, sir. Hey, man. Hey, Dre, coming to you. What's up, Drake? Hey, what's up, man? Um, yeah, I feel bad for Davis. When I saw that, uh, the first thing, and and I was like, I don't know why you gave him the option to run. Come on. Like, running is his first anchor. You know what I'm saying? Like, just like Lamar. No matter how much Lamar improves throwing the ball, running is his go-to. Yeah. So you don't even give them the option. You either let him throw a fade, you know, you got all these, they want to see his arm. So, like, there should be no QB run. They don't do that in the uh, in the senior bowl. It, it should be no QB runs at all. So I, I agree with you where there should be NFL coaches because all they're doing is running their, their same plays that they're comfortable with at their school. Yeah. And most of, and most of their quarterbacks can't throw anyway, so most of them will run to get in the end zone. So, you know, um, I just felt bad for him because it, it could have been a voice. Like, you know, you should have even gave him the option to do that. And um, I definitely would have, you know, like if I was his representative, he's done enough to where it was really a, a, a no-win situation in playing. He didn't have nothing to prove. Nothing. You know, so your representative really should have set you down. If you make somebody upset, okay, you make somebody upset. But um, it's a once you finish school, it's a business. And Doug, of all people, should know this is a business because ain't nobody cutting no check to sit there and recoup whatever money he's lost if he's lost money. Because you really don't, know, you know what I'm saying? No, you, you really, really don't. don't. You know what I'm saying? But where, where, you, but you, I, I tell you this. He lost the potential to be an undrafted free agent. Now, I don't know what the timeline is officially, but we all know with injury, there's a healing process and then there's a mental healing process that has to go, right? Like, you have to mentally know my ankle is good, right? You got to mentally feel like I can get, I can do what I used to do before my injury. So, yeah, you might be physically healed, but mentally, how, you know, how long would that take for him to get over that, to get over that injury? And let me just say this. <sighs> I love his agent, Miss Rashida. I love, I love her, but she has to take some of the blame on this. You got to tell your guy you don't need to do it. You don't need to yeah. do it. Or, 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 or say like, if you do, hey, this is what we're gonna do. You only throw. Only, only doing plays. That come you're on, doing. you're only, you're only through. I'm going. If I'm the agent, I'm going to the coach. Hey, listen. I know, I know what he's good at. I know he likes to run. We're only doing pass plays. That's it. And then on top of that, he's doing first quarter and I'm out. And I'm out. That's it. So yeah, you know, I, I, not gonna sit there and look the cut. I know I'm the feature. Y'all got one quarter out of me. It's the first, and I'm gonna sit there and you know cheer everybody else on. So um, hopefully it gets better and everything. But I felt I felt real bad for him. Because it could have been a voice. It, it, I believe so. And, and listen, man, we all know, we all understand football is a game of chance. Every time you step out on the football field, there's a chance that you can get hurt. What you try to do yeah. is eliminate. Power, What's up? QB power, though. Like, <laughs> you chose the, I mean, yeah, you could get hurt, you know, being in the pocket. But, hey, I mean, like I said, the senior bowl don't run QB power. You should be lining up with what the senior bowl do. Yeah. That's, you should be exactly. Okay, they, they run these type of plays. Okay, we need to run these type of plays. 
don't be running no QB powers. The NFL don't want to see him do QB powers. There's only a couple of quarterbacks that do that. Yeah. Lamar and old boy out of Buffalo. The rest of them are throwing. It is, and that's well, tough. Appreciate it, man. No, pre- hey, appreciate the call, Jay. Listen, the the ramifications. Let me just say this before I get up out of here. The ramifications of this decision at the you you thought it was bad before. Oh my God, I can't. The listen, the ramifications that this injury just happened to Davis Richards is going to reverberate through everything the Legacy Bowl does from here on out. Point blank, period. It is you're going to see the implications of this injury throughout the years of the Legacy Bowl because agents are going to be more inclined, coaches are going to be more inclined, you know, coaches of the player. Like, so let's say, good example, right? Let's say Eddie Robinson and Mikey Victor's like, hey, coach, we're thinking about the Legacy Bowl. He's like, no, you're not playing in that. You're not playing in that. All right. You're not playing in that game, right? You're going to have coaches from those players tell their players, no, you're not participating in that. Don't do that. That's not smart for you. That's not this. That's not that. That's not that, right? Those top prospect guys are not going to perform in this game, which does, let me make this very clear. I don't think it's a bad, I don't think it's a bad thing for the game. I really don't because I really believe the legacy bowl should be spotlighted for kids that are, you know, under under marketed in the D1 and D2, D3, and AIA, right? The kids that you have never heard about, the kids that unless you watch that school consistently, you've heard about, right? That's what the Legacy Bowl for me should be. And I think you're going to get more of that going down the line. I think they should be, it should be open to a lot more kids in, in just the scheme of everything, but it just is what it is. All right, listen, guys, I appreciate your time. You already know what it is. Next Tomorrow, Tuesday, Outspoken, back at 8 o'clock. All right. Outspoken, back 8 o'clock at night. We got to switch some things up. We got some stuff doing and doing today. So, Outspoken tomorrow, 8 o'clock at night. You already know what it is. Listen, until next time. Oh, oh. Make sure you become a member. If you want to be in the part of the chat, make sure you become a member. Road to 300 is, is full service and alive, all right? Make sure you become a member. Link is in the description below. Listen, until next time, you know. What I'm going to do, I'm going to holler. God bless.